Hey friends, we are at my desk today because I'm going to be doing a mini tour slash tutorial on how to use Notion for writers. Especially as the new year is fast approaching, I know a bunch of us are looking for better ways to organize our goals, our to-do lists, and our writer life in general. And I have to tell you, and you guys know that I've used a bunch of different productivity tools in the past, but I think Notion is definitely my favorite so far. I definitely was overwhelmed by Notion when I first started getting into it. Let me know if that's been your experience too. But especially when I started publishing my series this past year, I had so many more to do's to take care of and I kind of needed everything in one place and I needed more features and I was like you know what I'm going to try Notion one more time I'm gonna watch a bunch of tutorials I'm going to start with what I know and kind of learn as I go and I'm so glad I did because it has seriously been a game changer now I wouldn't call myself a notions expert or anything but what I wanted to create is kind of a notions beginner guide for writers that really helps you jump right in having a lot of fun with the basics and learning whatever else you want from there so in this notion tutorial I'll take you on a mini tour of my notion, the top ways I use it, especially as a writer, and the features I find most helpful. I'll also show you step by step how I create some basic pages so you can get started quickly, and I'll let you know how you can get some of my exact templates at the end too. In the past, I've used all kinds of tools like my bullet journal, Google Calendar, Trello, and I have videos for all of these tools in case you want to check those out as well. But the beauty of Notion is that I feel like it's all of these planners in one place. It's also super versatile, customizable, and simple to use once you learn the basics. Its digital format makes it easier to add or change things as you go, unlike paper planners. And there's a mobile app to take everything on the go. Plus, while it has some paid options for those that want to get advanced, all the features I'm going to show you today are completely free. First, let's talk about the different ways I've used Notion as a writer and entrepreneur because honestly, Notion starts out as a completely blank slate with all these pages totally ready for you to just jump in and make them whatever you want, which is the wonderful thing about Notion because it's totally customizable. But when you don't know what you're doing at first, it can kind of be overwhelming. So let me walk you through how I personally use it. First, I just have a simple opening page here that has a few quick links to different pages that I tend to frequent a lot. But over here, we have our sidebar that you can actually take away to make these pages even bigger if you want or bring it on back. And this is where I organize the main things that I use Notion for with sub pages underneath. The first thing you'll see here are my to-do lists, which basically work like a digital bullet journal for me. And I'll take you into that in just a second. The second thing is content planning for all the different platforms that I post and market my books on. Then of course we have my books and we'll get into all the different kinds of pages that I've used for each of the books that I'm working on right now. A lot of people, especially students, also use Notion as a note keeping app. And I kind of see myself as a student of writing. So I've taken a lot of different notes and created different pages on varying writing topics that I know I really want to work on. So this becomes a really great resource for me to look back on when I'm working on my book. And then I have a little personal section for a couple different pages. And here are the templates I've created that I will show you at the end and let you know how you can get access to. Now that we've seen the overview, let's do a little bit of a deep dive, starting with my to-do lists. And each of these main sections has its own page that kind of hosts the different sub pages that you're going to have under it. You can click here or you can click in the sidebar. And you can see here when I started out, I was very, very basic. I like adding pretty headers at the top, but I just had the title and then I had my sub pages for each month that I was doing planning for. Again, this works kind of like a bullet journal for me. So what I did is I planned for the month, but also every week. And I had a little section for each of the platforms that I was posting on. And then I can go into each day and set up my to do's with wonderful little check boxes that I can easily reorder around to whatever order I want. Then you can see this month I've got a little fancier. I searched some Notion layouts on Pinterest and found one that had these fun columns with colored headers. And you can see it's very similar to what I had before. It's just prettier. I also started differentiating between my schedule, like appointments that I've committed to and then to-do list. Now heading into 2022, I decided to get a little fancier and I added what's called a gallery here that has clickable sub pages that I can add images to and make things a little nicer. So you can see I started planning my 2022 goals, which I'll be sharing in a YouTube video next week. Then I also have a section where I break down all of these goals into a quarterly plan and then a monthly plan. And all of this is actually something I do every single year in my goal setting workbook that I give my patrons. But this year, instead of filling out the physical notebook, I decided to do it digitally in Notion and I really had a lot of fun with it. I'm actually going to be showing 
showing my upper tiered patrons tomorrow during a live workshop on goal setting, my quarterly plan and my monthly plan and how I break stuff like that down. Also helping hone their game plans for the year. So if you're interested in checking out the workbook, which all patrons get or that goals workshop, I'll leave a link to my Patreon down below so you can take a look. Then I just want to show you January spread real fast because this added a few other things. Like I wanted to add a overall writing goal section, platform goals, personal goals for the month, and then have a section where I could list my month's highlights. And then anything that I didn't do this month that I want to push to the next month. Another cool thing I recently learned, there are actually templates that you can create within a page. So I've created a template that has my whole weekly spread. And you can see I already have one set up here, but if I wanted to add a second one, all I need to do is click here and it adds a second one. Also, if this spread looks a little too complicated for you, there's also a Kanban board option. So if this is something you're a little more familiar with, you can create your cards that have your different tasks for the week and then move them from not started, in progress, and then completed, or you can rename these to to do, doing, and done. All of these features I will show you how to do in just a little bit, but let's move on to just look at content planning real fast. Under here, I'm planning YouTube, YouTube content, Patreon content, and content for my new TikTok. And I'll just show you real quick some of the features that I'm using to content plan, like a calendar that can drop down here. And this calendar also connects to this database here where I'm writing down all the videos I want to put out. And I can even close this up so you can see the whole database. And you can see here too that I can list if I have published that video or scripted it or I've edited it. And then in the calendar, all of the these videos are showing up and letting me know which ones are in progress and which ones are done. I also have a simpler table down here with just a bunch of ideas. And I also have my newsletter subscribers and my patrons vote on which topics they were most excited about. So that I will definitely be referencing in the coming months. I've also linked to a couple other pages like YouTube tip notes that I've taken and studying I've done on my own YouTube analytics. So these are easily clickable when I want to get to them. Then let's get to what you guys are probably most excited about, which is all the stuff about my books and the pages I use to help write them. This page is obviously very simple, but let's go into all the pages I've created for On Wings of Ash and Dust because there's a lot of them. And I got so many that I ended up putting them under different headers. So I have ones for plotting and drafting, revisions, and then publishing and marketing. As writers, I think one really helpful thing to do is set up character profiles, scene cards, outlines, world building details, which basically creates a little series Bible for your book. I've talked on this channel about making physical series Bibles and other kinds of digital ones, but this one might be my favorite along with having one in Scrivener. For this story, I've definitely used Scrivener for most of my plotting, but I did create some pages like when I was re-outlining episode two. And this is kind of a simple one with little toggles here where I could write a summary of each scene. I could have a bunch of them open at once if I wanted to study a certain act of the book. And I can also easily move scenes around if I needed to do that. Another way I could have plotted things is creating scene cards by using the gallery feature I showed you before. I haven't specifically done this for myself, but I thought this would be cool to show you guys where you could create a gallery called Act 1, Act 2, and then Act 3. And then you can just click on the cards to add the details about the scene. And then you can also move those cards around if you want to reorder your scenes. Similar to to that page, you could also create visual character profiles. So real quick, I put the pictures of all of my characters. And when I click on each character, I just pasted in what I usually use for character profiles, and I could just easily fill this out. And if I just started with Quinn's profile and fill that out, I could also duplicate it and then have it very easily set up for Vale when I did hers. I feel like you could also do multiple galleries where you have like your main characters and then your villains and your side characters. So you could have a lot of fun with this. I also think this kind of page would work really well for world building profiles. So again, here you can see for the fairy province of Grey Marrow, I have a location profile that I've used in other series Bibles and I just pasted it in here and could fill it out very easily. These are pages I definitely want to play with more when I start working again on Sisters of the Shadowwood. So I'll keep you guys updated if I find even more fun ways to use these pages for my books. And the last thing I have here is a word tracker, which I can't take 
credit for because I saw Sarah Cannon create this and I'm sure other people have done it as well. But I just wanted to show you guys kind of what it could look like by using a database where you can add, if you're doing NaNoWriMo, for instance, you could add Nano day four, picking the date and then writing how many words you wrote. And you can see here that I've already set it up so that it's adding all of these together. Oops, and I can rename this as words, not minutes. And this is a template that I'll definitely give you guys access to at the end of this video as well. If you're wondering, I don't think I would suggest to use Notion as an actual drafting or writing software. And I think you'll see what I mean when I get to the part where I show you guys how to create a page from scratch. But I think using Notion for plotting and even coming up with a revision plan or planning out your publishing and marketing strategies, I think those can be really great. And then you can use a different software like Scrivener or or Word or Google Docs to actually write the book. Let's look really quick at one of my revision pages because I did find that making a revision outline in here was really helpful. Here I kept track of all of the things I wanted to edit overall in the story. So when I toggle these on and off, they have those checklists that I could check off when I did something. And then if I scroll down here, you can see I was keeping track for each episode or you could do this for chapters where there were overall things that I wanted to work on. Sometimes I divided it by what was left for me to do and things I had done, but I wanted someone to kind of beta read and test out and make sure that it worked. And then I had a section for chapters and green meant that the chapter was solid. And honestly, it's been a while. I forget what these other colors meant, but I think they had different variations of chapters that needed to be totally reworked or if they only had minor tweaks. Then we get to publishing and marketing, which was actually the biggest reason why I started using Notion because keeping track of all of this was just too much for my brain on any other productivity app. And you can see here, I was using it to brainstorm different book blurbs for the different episodes, but I think you guys will really like the publishing and marketing checklist page the most because you can see I organized it into things I needed to finish editing and finish the covers. And then I had to do lists for episode one, which was the first episode that came out in the series. Then I had drop downs with all of the to do's I needed for all the other episodes. And then I made lists of my marketing ideas ideas, things I wanted to do to lead up to release, release day activities, ideas for my release party game ideas that I did on YouTube. And again, you can see here that there is a schedule as well. The last thing I want to show you guys before I take you into a mini tutorial on all the basic features that you'll want to know to start setting up some of these pages from scratch and making your own designs. Let's look at the writing help section. One thing I've really been working on as a writer is beefing up how I describe things, how I show emotion, when I write. I was studying figurative language, building in more of the five senses. So from different books I was reading or YouTube videos I was watching, I was taking lots of notes. But one page I really want to show you is this word organizer here because I ended up using a database to organize different words that described discomfort or pain, frustration or anger, fear and nerves, um, action words, battle terms, whether it was verbs or adjectives. I organized a bunch of them here by using what's called tags. And the beauty of this is that you can actually filter your database by which kind of tags you want the database to be organized by. And you can save those filters. So say I'm looking for a word or a phrase that will help me describe discomfort. So I click on that and all of the words that are tagged with that show up and I can now do a quick search as I am editing a certain scene to make sure I'm not using the same words over and over again and I'm expanding my vocabulary. I'll just show you one more section as an example of taking notes too because I was reading a book that was describing using more of the five senses as you write. So here you can see I'm using headers and bullet points and colors and different things to organize my notes so I can easily reference them as I'm writing. I also took notes on writing fight or battle or action scenes, writing good book blurbs. I started watching some videos on marketing and ads, and I'm sure there's so much more that I will use this section for in the future. One other section that I don't have here, but I've seen some other writers and readers use Notion for is keeping a reading log. And obviously,
obviously I also keep that log on Goodreads, but it might be really cool to add a page where I'm keeping track of what I'm reading and maybe even what I'm learning from each book that can help me become a better writer. At this point, you might be saying, wow, this looks like a lot of really great stuff, but how the heck do I get started? To show you what you'll probably see when you first get in here, I've created a blank account where Notion basically sets you up with a bunch of starter pages that can actually be super helpful if you want to go through and read everything and watch all of their videos. They also have templates here that you can search through and then say, use this template and it'll download to your sidebar here. But honestly, what I would probably do is create an archive page, put all of this stuff in here, or you can just delete them, which you can always go back to trash if you've deleted something by accident. But then I would add a completely new page to start from scratch. And this is where I'm going to break down how you can set up a basic page with a bunch of the features I showed you before. Let's go ahead and hide the sidebar so that we can really see the space we have. And I personally like going up to these three dot dot dots and clicking full width. So again, I can make the best use of the space. If we start with an empty page, a lot of the practical things you're gonna wanna know is how to add the basic features. And unless you're just typing text when you wanna add something special, all you need to do is type the backslash and you can either scan through here to find what you want or I usually just start typing it in. So if I wanna type a header, there's different sizes, one, two, and three. Let's start with heading one, name it whatever you want. Or if you wanna use a shortcut, I found that if you type the number sign and then a space, it automatically gives you heading one. What about if you want a checklist? Again, you do that backslash and you can start typing to do and it'll give you those check marks. And when you enter, it'll just automatically give you another one. And then if you wanna put that task kind of under the other one, you just click the six dots here and drag it under. One of my absolute favorite features is the toggle feature. And all you have to type in is toggle. You can add whatever header you want there. And then when you click the arrow down and click enter, you can add text or a check mark. And the check mark actually also has a shortcut when you do these two symbols, it creates the check mark for you. Or another feature I use a lot is a bullet point, which a shortcut for that is just doing a little dash and a space. Then what's wonderful about the toggles is you can collapse it and open it up. So that makes certain pages that would be super, super long with a lot of different things on it, a lot cleaner because you can condense all of your sections and easily get to the things you really want to see. You can even create toggles within toggles. And a shortcut for that is this arrow doodad and a space. One thing that I have been dying for Notion to do is actually enable headers to be toggles, which I literally just saw become a thing this morning. When I start typing in toggles, I can click any of the size headers and they're not just a regular header, but they are actually a toggle header that I can add other bullet points or whatever else underneath. And if I wanted to turn this into a toggle header or this into a checkbox or anything into anything else, basically, you just click the six dots by the side here. I type in here and now it's a toggle header. Or if I wanted this task to be a bullet point, I just click that. So you can see this is super versatile and super easy to change things on the go. And then look, you can collapse the headers. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this for so long. And then you can reorder them, open them up. Oh, it's just so wonderful. Another thing you can do is add a link, which you could always just paste the link in here and it becomes clickable. But what I really like to do is say, this is gonna go to Goodreads. So I can just type Goodreads. Highlight that and then just literally command V for paste and it pastes the link right there and makes this clickable. The other thing you can do is use the at sign to actually search for a page within your notion that you want to link to easily. So say I wanted to link to the archive page because I don't have a lot of other pages on this blank template. I could just click that and now it is a clickable link to that archive page. Now that I showed you the basics, how do we make this pretty? The first thing I like to do is go to the top and we have a few different options. We can add a cover image. It'll always give you a default image, but I really like to go in to change the cover. And you can pick one from their gallery, but they also have Unsplash integrated into here, which is great. And I can type writing a picture and it pops up right there. You can also upload one of your own or link from one you found on the internet, but then I can go in here and I can actually reposition it as well if I wanna see a certain part of the picture. And then what I can do too is add an icon. So I can click here, I can search a certain emoji, or I can even upload my own image if you wanna get really fancy. I don't always do an icon, but what is nice is they end up showing up in the sidebar or if you link this page on another page. 
Then we have colors and you can basically make almost anything a specific color by again, clicking those dots on the side, going down to color and you can either make the whole word a color, which I don't do too much. My favorite thing is to go to color and actually pick a background color. Let's go with green because we have a green check mark up here. And you can also do that with the other elements here. So say I wanted to make this yellow and maybe I want to move that task down and make this a different color. There we go. I don't know that I would make every single line a different color, but just to show you the different options. The only thing that I kind of don't like is when you make a toggle a certain color, it makes the entire block that same color and you can go in and make the things under it a different color, but it just kind of looks a little funky to me. But that's how I've made those headers that you saw like in my to-do list pages. A different option for headers is also a call out, which I don't think it's supposed to be used like this. It says make writing stand out, but I've seen a lot of people use this as a header as well. And then you can go in and click another icon. So that's just another option for headers. You can also insert images very easily by doing the backslash and typing image. And at first, most of the images are gonna be really big, but all you need to do is go to the side of the image, see these little lines here and drag it to whatever size you want. Notion also has a columns feature to put things next to each other. So you just want to go next to the element you want to put your item and then you can make them bigger or smaller and say I even wanted to put this one next to this header, maybe make this a different color and resize that so it's kind of equal. Then I can see two different lists next to each other with a fun image. And if I wanted to add a little extra divide between my section, I can also add a divider. And a shortcut for that is actually three dashes and it automatically adds another divider. Now, what if you wanted to do a couple of advanced things that I was showing you before, like a gallery? Well, that's super easy. Just backslash and then gallery. And you'll see options. You can make it inline, which means it's going to go on this page or as a full page, which it'll just create it as a new page and then link it right here instead. But I want to put it inline and then I can name my gallery and then I can go into the different sections. I can type whatever I want to here. And if I want an image to show up, I can just insert an image like we did before. Another thing you might want to add is a table. And again, that's just the backslash and then table. You can make it inline or full page. They also added a very basic kind of table, which isn't like a database table. So if you want just like a simple table, add a few columns here, you can add underneath. You can make this top column a header row by clicking options or a header column. You can resize these guys or I could make my own headers and pick my own colors. And you can actually type in at any time what color you want to instead of clicking colors and then finding it. And I can add my headers here. I can reorganize the order that I want the columns to show up in or even the rows. I think you guys get the picture. But how about more of a table database? Just type in table, click the database option. And here is where you can add your tags, add other types of columns. You could also add a different view. So this is where you can add like the calendar view I showed you before. And I'm not gonna do a deep dive on databases because this video is probably already getting too long. But if you guys want me to do more of a deep dive, definitely let me know because as you can see from my other pages, there's so many ways you can use databases as a writer. Or if you don't want a database, but you just want a calendar backslash calendar, and this is where you can literally just click the plus button and add your events or things you want to track. I could also make this a toggle header, put my calendar in the toggle. And this is how on my other page, I put a calendar next to something else by just dragging it next to it. Or maybe I wanna drag it actually next to this header here so they line up. You might see that your item that was under that header has jumped down here. So all you need to do is drag it up here. And if I want to collapse this, I can do that as well. Let's show you just two more things. And then I'm going to tell you guys about my templates. But another thing you might want to create is a Kanban board. You would just do backslash boards. This one's super easy because it just creates it for you and you can add new cards and then move them to wherever you want. And the last thing I wanted to show you is that you can actually embed certain things like Google Docs. So if you start typing embed, you can click the word embed to link to different things, or if you have your Google Drive set up, then you can just click on that. And then I search for what document I want to insert, select it, 
And then a preview of that doc shows up right here and I can just click it to then go to Google Docs and edit it. Hopefully this was helpful in showing you how to insert all these basic features because these are literally all my favorites that help me create all the pages that I showed you before. So if you're excited to take what you just learned and dig in and create your own pages, now you have a lot of the basic tools. But if you're someone who's like, oh, I could really use some of those templates you were talking about to get started, the ones I've created so far is my monthly spread that you can literally just copy to your own notion. Again, it has one week's worth set up here, but then you can always click to add a new week. Another one is a basic page with uh, a couple galleries that you can use for different kinds of story profiles like character profiles, world building profiles, or even outlining cards like we were talking about earlier. And you can totally go in and customize the pictures and the icons and everything about these pages once you get them. I'll also include this basic word tracker that you can delete all this information and start your own. I also have a basic Kanban template you can copy. And this is the page that is already full screen, already has a cover, an icon, a header, and some sample text. And this is something that I duplicate all the time to start pages that I'm kind of creating from scratch, but has all the basics that I already want. And what you would do once you download the template is you can just go to these dots here and click duplicate and it'll add a copy and then you can customize it however many times you want. If you're excited to grab these templates, all you need to do is go over to my website, author Brittany Wang, click on the members page and become a member slash subscriber of my newsletter. By becoming a subscriber, you'll not only get these templates for Notion, but a bunch of other templates I've created like my series Bible templates, book title generator, and more. You'll get any book news and first looks and behind the scenes kind of fun stuff about my books and series. And of course, my monthly newsletter and an archive of all past newsletters as well. Simply scroll down here, go ahead and subscribe, and then you will get an email that gives you the password for the private members page where all the templates will live. I'll also link a couple other really helpful tutorials that I found. And if there's any other templates you guys would like me to create and include or other deep dive Notion tutorials you'd like me to do after this one, please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to create those as well. I hope you guys found this tour and tutorial super, super helpful. I'd love to see any templates you guys make yourself too. You can always tag me over on Instagram at author Brittany Wang. I would so love that. And if you want more helpful content on writing, publishing, goal setting for writers, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're talking all about my 2022 writer goals next week and how I set them, how I come up with my game plan, or you can check out one of these two videos for now and we'll see you there.